So the one thing I knew this place had is in a really amazing train layout. They said that everything here is hand constructed. This layout, I believe it's 100 years old. It was eventually moved here. And there's tons of animated pieces, including like the little workers there at the blacksmith shop swinging on the tree. Wow. This is pretty big, pretty impressive. I'm going to try to point out what I can along the way. They even have some other pieces on display here. CSX, Chessie. Looks like there is actually water in the middle too. Got a rail yard here. We got someone shoveling. Oh, look at the horse going around to spin to grind up the material. Then you got someone beating the sheets on the clothesline there. Got the well. Boy, a lot of intricate pieces here. I know this camera is not doing so great because it's wide angle, but it is what we have to work with right now. Turntable, roundhouse. There's even workers in there. There's arcing like they're welding on a train. We've got a mill over there for lumber. Goes in and out of the water. Pretty neat. Really large scale. Oh, he's like the steel plant. Very much what where Pittsburgh got their nickname from, the Steel City, due to these massive steel manufacturing plants. Like an old time town here. All the little houses, and you can even see there's some mines there or coke ovens. Oh, yeah, coke ovens for coal. And they said there's a quarter million trees here, too. They were giving us some stats about it. So, throughout this whole thing, there's a quarter million trees. Here looks to be a coal breaker loading up the coal cars. And you can see the lighting changes too. So it's going into like nighttime right now. There's a really amazing carnival scene here or amusement park. They got numerous rides actual water with a fountain lighting wow this is pretty impressive to say the least there's a little dance hall you see the whipper ride another like spinning ride there airplane ride like a funhouse boat An actual funhouse there too oh no way so this is pittsburgh's luna park and believe it or not, I've mentioned in previous videos, Scranton had a Luna Park too. It only operated for a couple of years, but Pittsburgh, I forgot, had a Luna Park as well. This is what it's modeled after. Oh, they got the carousel. Got the car ride. Even a circus here. Look at the seal. Even a roller coaster. And now transitioning to daytime here. Leap the dips. Oh yeah, this is uh, Lake Mount Park in Altoona. I rode that very roller coaster. It's the world's oldest operating coaster. There's even a riverboat there. It 
There's so much to see, it's like you don't know where to look. Here's some hobos by the fire. Limestone quarry. Really neat how it's, you know, layered. And they're actually working right there, chipping on the rock. There's like a million dollar mansion here with the river view. And a little flowing stream that is real water. Very hard to have real water on a train layout, so they perfected it. Here's Rogers Airfield, the airstrip. Various airplanes, even a, like a blimp over there. They even got their very own incline plane operating. There's bridge construction there. Westinghouse Research Laboratories. There's a big river boat right there. A lot of amazing buildings. And again, everything is reportedly hand constructed. Here we got a repurposed passenger car. Now is Jim's Diner. This is actually a trolley. And right down Main Street, got a really large parade. There's a big building there, all storefronts. Looks like Statue of Liberty on the top of it. Some beautiful colonial homes. Wow. I'm just trying to take it all in. I'm sure there's a lot of things I'm missing as well. Look at the uh, Bijou Dream. Cash and Credit, Hollander and Sons. Attention to detail is like some of the best I've ever seen. What is this, the stadium? Looks like we got a little, nice little lot here. Classic cars, Gulf gasoline. Snakes, why do you have to be snakes? And there he is. Hey, he's bigger than I thought he was. Interested in some hissing cockroaches? There's hundreds of them in here. Got a little turtle there on the rock. So one of the things that's included with your tour is the tour of a submarine, the USS Requin SS-481. And we're taking the tour next. So this is a pretty cool experience. We get a self-guided tour, 20 minutes aboard the submarine, kind of explore at your own leisure. And it's my first time ever boarding or exploring a submarine. So I'm not sure how bright it's gonna be or how dark it's gonna be, but uh, I'll show you what I can. That's where they load the torpedoes. Yeah, wow. Got the white watertight hatches here. Oh, gotta go through. And here is the uh, fine dining room with the window service right there. <laughs> Here's the sleeping quarters. Lockers, more sleeping quarters. 
Here's where some of the items they have with them. Letters, typewriter, books, tobacco. Oh, here's like the, uh, probably the captain's room, maybe. Uh-oh, they even got desserts. Okay, yeah, these are, you gotta be careful, you get hurt. Oh, wow. Here is the control room. It's like, what does this do? What does that do? Really skilled individuals to be able to man this ship or the submarine. It's like, hopefully they don't. <laughs> Down we go. Oh, there's a communications room. Radio station. Another one? Yep. Oh, here's a larger kitchen. They got steak and pork chops. <laughs> They're eating good. Did I just do something? No, no. Got a below level pantry there. Checker tables. This is quite neat. This is the mess deck. Got their pinup girls there. More sleeping quarters. Kind of narrow, but that's expected. Can't imagine sleeping right here though. So here we are, we're almost in the middle of the submarine. You are here. Really neat. There's sinks, more food. There's the the John. Not a whole lot of room. I'm sure after bumping your head a few times in that, you'll get quite good at going through those holes. We're now in the engine room, forward engine. You don't like it. It's scary. Yeah. It's scary, but it's really neat. Imagine being hundreds of feet below level. Let's see. There's a hatch to go up. Wow, oh, there's like little corners everywhere to go. More engine room. Engine three, we're getting towards the rear of the sub, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, the cutaway section of the engine. And it smells like diesel down here and, and oil and grease. It is heated though. Please not pull on the levers. I'm glad they told me that because I was about to. Port control. Anyone above probably six foot three would be bumping their head all the time. So that was a really cool experience to be able to go on board that and have it be included with your admission at the Carnegie Science Museum. Now a few things I did learn from the gentleman's side is that this last operated in 1972, had 80 crew members and could go down to a depth of 400 feet. They said this was a land sub though, it was primarily above water. 95% of the time they only went below the surface to hide from an enemy. But now it is part of the Carnegie Science Museum and open for tours. You just have to schedule it when you buy your tickets and you get 20 minutes on board to walk through, check it out. Really unique though. I mean, it's hard to believe that, you know, you'd be on board 
for you know an extended period of time and living down there working down there eating you know that is basically your your office so to speak and there's so many miles of like plumbing and wires and hoses and it's really hard to wrap your mind around it how intricate and detailed and involved it is for something like this to operate but nonetheless i'm glad i was able to check it out see it in person and hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well up here in the fourth floor they got some lego action where you could create your own pieces and kind of make a balance some ways to play with electricity a trivia game a works theater with some shows at certain times a little kids clubhouse and one thing over here i want to try is a simulation earthquake shack we're going to try that next That was a 7.8 Chile quake. Now they're doing San Francisco World Series quake, 7.1. It's almost like turbulence on an airplane. We did something similar, I believe. It was at the <laughs> at the Wonderworks. They had an earthquake room, but it was much more stronger than this. But it's still pretty neat. They actually have a little window here to see how it's operating. It's like a big shaking arm. We got a pretty interesting little experiment here. Look at it, it actually puts uh, the organs on you to show you where they're at. So there, it could do muscle. And there, let's see. Skeleton. Let me take that one off. So it's all like interactive, like virtual. It's pretty neat. So yeah, there's a skeleton. Oh boy, look at my head. That is creepy. Oh, here I am right here. Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Hey, it's not doing thumbs up. It's trying. <laughs> they got a mock uh, medical machine here, x-ray. Can scan it. Could do CT scan. MRI and Gamma. It's like the Predator. They actually have a uh, air hockey with a, a robot. Let's see how we do. Try one more. Oh, wow. So we got a planetarium here we're going to be checking out. This is supposed to be stars over Pittsburgh, so I'll give you just a brief look at the show. This is the ecliptic, the apparent path of the sun across the sky. Every line that you see is a date 
It's like a big calendar in the sky and the ancients could look up mm -hmm. and tell time. It takes 11 minutes for a signal to get to Mars and 11 minutes for a signal to get back. And that is moving as fast as light. Here we are rotating over this beautiful planet about half the size of the Earth with some of the biggest geological features in the solar system rotating into view it is the largest volcano in the solar system. That is Olympus Mons, Mount Olympus. It is so large, it would fit over this country of France, about as tall as three Mount Everest. You can see some extinct volcanoes up on the horizon. We're gonna try and fly up and see if we can get to the largest canyon in the solar system. So for a planet that's half the size of the Earth that has some of the largest features, the canyon would fit from Boston, Massachusetts to Los Angeles, California, stretching across the United States. Our own Grand Canyon would fit only in a part of it. Our Grand Canyon is about a mile deep. Mariner Valley is four miles deep and is so wide, if you stood in the middle of it, you would not see the sides. On the corner here at 7th Avenue, do have a pretty incredible mural here on the building. Really colorful. And uh, looking down, I don't even know what street this is, but uh, get a good view down to towards Point Street Park where we were earlier today. It's right now around rush hour. Everyone's kind of going home from work, so it's quite busy with traffic and buses and pedestrians on the street, but this is what it's like to be here, you know, around, say, 4.30, 5 o'clock on a uh, Monday afternoon. So further down the street, we do have an Arby's. And as we come to the corner here, we do have a McDonald's. And across the street, that triangle-shaped building is the Wood Street subway station. And I'm going to touch more on that in a separate video and we'll be able to actually ride the subway and I'll tell you all about it. There's actually some pretty unique history related to that, but that will be in a separate video. We're gonna cross the street though and walk up here. There's an old theater over there I do wanna to showcase to you guys and we'll see what else we find along the way. If you notice here above the McDonald's, there's an old sign hanging there. It looks like these were previously a different type of business. Obviously, Jackson Hewitt McDonald's took over the bottom floors, but that sign there has been there for, it looks like, decades. Probably hasn't been used or illuminated or anything in a long time, but still hanging strong. And looking down, there's a GNC store there. And down in the distance, I'm going to try to crop in the image, there is the bank tower with a nice green, almost like an emerald green paint scheme to it. So a lot of nice visuals here. And here's a better look at the, what's commonly known as the T. It's Pittsburgh's light rail subway system. Looks like the pigeons like french fries too, not just me. So right here is the Harris Theater. I'm gonna try to do some research during editing and if I can find out anything about it, we'll add it to the screen. But it says, this is just intermission, stay safe and healthy. It looks like it still is used as a theater. There are some movie posters in there. And this would be a sight to see at nighttime lit up. It's got a, a face on it. You know, the lighting, the neon colors. So, Harris Theater right here in downtown Pittsburgh. I do spot something across the street there. It's a blast from the past. You see what it is? It's actually a telephone booth. Now it's hard to see, but there is a little overhead canopy here and it has twinkling, color-changing LED lights. Not sure why it's here. It's kind of a desolate alleyway, but kind of to see to how it would be at nighttime. But yeah, any information you can share as to why this is here, would love to know. It looks like Exchange Way is the intersection there and Garrison Place. Overhead neon lighting or uh, LED lighting.
definitely going to need your help for this. Now, I am perplexed as to not only what these are, but as to what I'm standing on. Right here on Liberty Avenue, there is a rubber mat. And it goes for maybe 30, 40 feet. I'm standing on it right now. It's on the road. And it's right in front of these giant statues that are playing instruments. So I'm curious if they put on maybe some type of music venue here or what the story is behind this. But if you guys have any information at all, again, would love to learn more about what I'm seeing and sharing with you guys. But these are quite massive. I'll try to give you guys a uh, scale comparison, but yeah, these are probably about 12, I'd say 12 to 14 feet tall. They are pretty big. And they almost look like uh, like Jack and the Beanstalk, the way they're colored and the way the stuff is in the background there. So definitely unique and interesting. Another sign here, Taylor Shop, cleaning, alteration, and pressing. Looks like another one of the businesses that formerly resided here that are either no longer in business or just currently closed. But I love seeing the old signage. Up top it even says passports, photos. So you can imagine the people that came through here getting their necessary uh, clothes tailored or getting passport photos. Just another sign of the times. Things have changed. All right, so we're back at the hotel for dinner. It's known as the 5.30 kickback. And tonight on the menu is... Got chicken fingers, mac and cheese, and is that cream or broccoli? What? Yeah. Cream and potato? All right, we'll start with the soup first. Oyster crackers in it. How is it? Soup's actually pretty good. I mean, I'm not a big fan of broccoli, but the potatoes, the carrots, the soup itself tastes pretty good. There's no broccoli in it. What the hell is a green star? Celery. Okay, not broccoli, <laughs> celery. <laughs> Let's try some of the mac and cheese here. I know Lily already finished hers off, so she must like it. It's actually pretty good. Now the chicken fingers. Chicken fingers, not the best. I mean, they're a little dry, but overall, it's still enjoyable. I mean, you can't really beat a free dinner. As I stated, this is the first hotel we've ever stayed at to offer something like this. So, you know, regardless of how the food tastes, it is free. And it definitely saves you some money. So we're going to finish our dinner and uh, see you guys in just a moment. So here we are in one of the coolest parts of the hotel, and that is the former shooting range. It is now the indoor swimming pool and hot tub. And you can kind of tell that this was a shooting range because of the way the walls are angled. They go down at a slant to kind of help absorb the firepower or the bullets to help them you know, get collected in a safe area. It does have the same form to it, but pretty amazing they're able to transform it from a shooting range for security staff of the Federal Reserve Bank into a swimming pool. It does go from three foot to five foot. I was already in there. It's a little bit chilly, probably around 60 degrees. I wish it was a little bit warmer, but the hot tub is fantastic. Jill and Lily are in there now. But aside from this, on the eighth floor, there is a fitness room down there and some other stuff. So. They also do have a wheelchair lift for handicap accessible use of the pool as well. So this is on the eighth floor, just one floor below us, and you get to use this by reservation right now through the hotel staff. We have it to ourselves, and it's a nice little welcome addition. So I'm going to get back in the hot tub and uh, get warmed back up because it's a bit chilly out here in the air. Right up there, it says Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. 
big billboard and looking down the street you can see the different sizes of buildings older newer some of the old uh, advertisements on the side of the building there then you got some really crazy architecture like this which is kind of circle shape and looking back up really nice skyline view and on the left here is our hotel Drury Plaza Hotel so after hours today in the city exploring walking and enjoying what this place has to offer I'm gonna officially wrap up our day one adventure here in the steel city Joe and Lily already went back to the room we're gonna be getting ready for dinner which you guys will probably already see because I'm doing this out of order but um, they are doing the 5 5 30 kickback so it is free dinner for us tonight at the hotel and we'll be heading to uh, back to the room to relax the rest of the night tomorrow is a brand new video a brand new day with a whole new adventure in the steel city here the heart of Pittsburgh if you want to find out what we're gonna be doing make sure you tune into that video and don't forget I'm filming some separate videos too that are gonna have their own dedicated video so that you guys get to see kind of the in-depth tour and details of those locations and of course our part two return track return back on the Amtrak train back to Harrisburg so more videos to come more adventures but I want to thank you for joining us today it's been a great time the Carnegie Science Museum by far is a great attraction I highly re recommend going there being able to explore the submarine too was simply incredible it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience and to have it included with your admission is really great and I think they have a really fantastic train layout as well so you know we showed you kind of uh, highlights of what the place has to offer but there's four floors there tons of stuff to see and do very interactive great staff the only thing that was closed was the cafe down in the basement but aside from that everything else is open we got to do the planetarium and there's a lot of things we didn't get to do because we just didn't have all that much time in the day so Maybe in the future we will return, but otherwise, if you want to share down below what you found interesting or entertaining, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, thanks for taking the time to watch. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next video.